Welcome, my name is Olaf and this is the first part of intermediate series and we'll start with standing poses. First of all, a short meditation and I will guide you through it. So pose yourself in a position which is comfortable to your liking and close your eyes. Then focus your attention on the ingoing breath and the outgoing breath at the beginning of the nose, at the entrance of the nostrils. Remain there with your awareness to sharpen the mind. So you will be able to become fully aware of the yoga techniques later on. As a yogi, sooner or later, you will discover strength, sources of energy deep within you, which go beyond a physical strength. These sources will help you to spread your attention, to spread your energy, not only throughout the body, but throughout the day, so you can give proper energy, proper attention, to the things you're occupied with in your daily life. Standing poses generate strength and help you to explore these deeper sources within you. Therefore, you have to become aware, sensitive. So stay with the breath at the entrance of the nostrils as the breath goes in, as the breath goes out. Stay with the breath. If you find that your mind has wandered away, gently, without disappointment, bring it back to the awareness of the breath. Or if you find yourself to be moving with the body, calm the body and bring the awareness back to the breath. Slowly and deeply inhale, extending the spine. The chin sinks a bit deeper, so the top of the head is really the top of your body. And with an exhalation, slowly open your eyes. Again, slowly and deeply inhale, twisting a bit to the right, placing the hands. And with an exhalation, fold yourself forward to or over the right knee. Again, slowly inhale, twist yourself a bit to the left, exhale, fold yourself forward to or over the left knee. And again, inhale, coming up, exhale, open the legs and massage the toes a bit. Perhaps you can 
push the toes away from you and pull them towards you. Rub over the soles of the feet and the feet themselves, the ankles, the lower legs, the knees and the upper legs. And when you're rubbing over your legs, you can follow the natural energy paths running through the legs. So the energy runs up from the inside all the way to the hip area and from the outside of the legs down to the ankles. It's the same energy path you will be experiencing in your standing poses where the creative force, the sakti force moves up in your body and your grounding energy moves down at the sides, the outside of the legs, all originating from the earth and the softness of your feet. Then come to a standing position. First we're going to start from a mildly spreaded pose. First we're going to explore Vira Badrasana too. Vira means hero, Badra means happiness. From this spread position, feel the softness of the feet. From there, the stability of your ankles. The legs are stretched, straight. You have a sense that the knee pits are opening up. And the spinal cord is resting right above the hip area. Then, with an inhalation, open yourself and spread yourself out. From the heart, you feel the hands reaching outward. You feel the skin over the fingers, the palms of the hands. But also you feel the softness of the feet, the skin on the feet the legs, everything is pulling away from the body. The face remains soft. Then lower the palms of the hands facing the earth. The right foot is turning out 90 degrees and the left foot is turning in. Keep the hips parallel. Then look to the right. And with an exhalation, slowly bending the left knee, the right knee. Either you stop bending when the upper leg is parallel to the earth, or whether if the knee is just above the ankle. So don't place the knee over the ankle joint. Remain in this pose for as long as you like. The feeling, the bend of the right leg, the strength in it, and the stretch, the elongation of the left leg. Keep on breathing normally. And also be aware that you don't push yourself forward, but try to remain straight. With a nice inhalation, straightening the right leg. Again, turning the feet forward, facing forward slowly, letting the arms and the hands sink down and place them again in front of the heart area. Close your eyes and return to your breath. Some nice, deep and slow inhalations. With an in-breath from the feet to the top of the head and with an out-breath from the top of the head to the soles of the feet. Keeping the face soft, the shoulders relaxed. One more time. A deep inhalation and a slow 
exhalation and open the eyes. Then to the left, slowly with an inhalation, gracefully open yourself, extending to all sides, lowering the palms of the hand. Turn the left foot outwards, 90 degrees, and the right foot a bit inward. Keeping the hips in line with the legs or your yoga mat, looking to the left and then bending the left leg. Keep on breathing normally, feeling the strength of the legs flowing from the softness of the feet through the ankle joints the awareness of the legs deeper in the body towards the hip area, the spinal cord, filling your entire body. A couple of breaths. Two more times. And with the next inhalation, straightening the left leg, turning the head forward, the feet, and slowly lowering the arms, folding the hands in front of the heart area. If you so desire, come back to Tadasana. Stay here for a while, or maybe loosening up the legs a bit. You can hold Virabhadrasana too, as long as you like. Now we move on to a following up pose called Parsva Konasana. Parsva means side, Kona means angle. So it's side angle pose. Again, to start, move to this mild spreading position. And again, take your time to really ground yourself. Feel the connection with the earth. And then again, slowly inhale, Extending the arms, the hands sideways, palms of the hands facing down, turning the right foot outwards, the left foot inwards a bit. Again, facing to the right, bending the right knee. Virabhadrasana 2 again. And now make a choice depending on your openness, on your flexibility, either bending the right arm and placing it on the upper leg and Extending the left arm overhead, facing the palm of the hand. You stay in this position for a while. Or, from Virabhadrasana 2, gracefully tilting the body downwards, placing the right hand next to the right foot, looking upward to a full Parsvakonasana. Stay again here for a couple of breaths. Two more times. Inhale, extending the left side of the body. Inhale, move back first to Virabhadrasana 2 and then come back to the spreading position with the hands folded in front of the heart area. Relax yourself in this pose. Eventually, you'll become aware that there's a straight line extending from one hand to the opposing foot. I will show you 
when we do the left side. Again, from this position, extend yourself, palms of the hands facing down, turning out the left foot and the right foot a bit inward, the facing left, bending the left leg, and with an exhalation, again, make the choice according to your own comfort, either this position or at this position, in uh, Parsvakonasana. A lot of people make their spreading pose a bit too narrow, thereby obstructing themselves. When exploring Parsvakonasana, so now you see there's a, a kink in the straight line between the right hand and my back foot. If you become aware of it, make the standing pose, the spreading pose, slightly bigger, finding the correct angle, so it eventually becomes a straight line. If you have chosen to do this variation, be aware of the shoulder, don't sink in, but extending it away from the ear, away from the head. Inhale slowly back to Virabhadrasana 2 and back to the center, to the default position. Take a couple of breaths here. One more time, at either side. When placing the hand next to the foot, make sure that the hand is placed with the thumb touching the middle of the outer foot arch. I don't know the proper English word, so I just call it like I did. Like this. Not like this, nor this, but Try to place it right next to the foot. From this position again, extend yourself. You may also stay a while in this pose, extending the body, keeping the shoulders soft and the face as well. Palms of the hands facing down, rotating the right foot outward, the left foot a bit inward, again back to Virabhadrasana 2, and with a nice circular motion, again back to Parsvakonasana. There's also weight on the right hand next to my right foot. It's also supporting my body. Also don't sink in, but extending, pushing the shoulder away from the body and have a sense of rota rotating the belly button sideways and up. So you get a nice stretch. Two more breaths. Inhale, come back, Virabhadrasana 2, and come back to the center. Two breaths, you stay in this pose. Again, feeling the softness of the feet, the strength of the legs. Making use of the upward force of the earth. The earth is supporting you. You're not only heavy, but you can use the upward force in all your positions, in all your poses. Inhale, extending yourself back to Virabhadrasana 2. And with an exhalation, again slowly, explore Parsvakonasana.
a couple of breaths with an inhalation you reach out with the hand pushing the right foot back into the earth extending the right side of the body and with an exhalation exploring the softness of the abdomen, the strength of the legs, the softness of the feet, feeling the left hand placed, also supporting a bit of your body weight. Inhale. And exhale. Last time, inhale. And exhale. Make beautiful motions. Coming back to the default position. And take a couple of breaths. You may stay or hold this position for as long as you like, but also try to be aware that you have to spread your strength, your energy to come into the pose without harming yourself, staying in the pose, exploring it, and also, again, moving out of the post without harming yourself with a full attention and awareness. So don't stay as long as possible in this pose and then collapse coming out of the pose, but also moving out of the pose gracefully with awareness. Come back to Tadasana. Two deep and nice inhalations from the feet to the top of the head. And from the top of the head, breathing out to the feet. And again, open the eyes. Now we're going to move into the third pose. Pashvottanasana. Again, to a spreading pose, but this time very mildly, not too far apart are the feet. Then slowly inhale, making the arms, the hands moving up in a nice circular motion. Then again turning out the right foot 90 degrees and the left foot turning inwards as far as possible so the hips are able to come in line. Extending yourself with an inhalation and then first folding yourself, reaching out forward, lowering the arms, placing it on either the lower leg, maybe even just above the knee, the ankle, or eventually placing the fingertips or the hands flat on the floor. Inhale, and with an exhalation, move to a nice forward bend. And stay in this pose again for a couple of breaths. With an inhalation, try to extend the body, pushing the top of the head a bit forward. And with an exhalation, exploring the pose deeper by folding, deepening the pose with a forward bend. Two more breaths. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale slowly. Move up. And turning forward again, lowering the arms and placing the hands in front of the heart area. Take a couple of breaths. Slowly inhale. And exhale, emptying the chest, the sides of the body and the abdomen. And again, inhale, make a nice motion upwards with the arms and the hands. 
extending the left foot outwards, the right foot inwards as far as possible. So the hips are in line with each other. Try to prevent the hips. So this, if this is your position, make the spreading pose a bit smaller and try to discover your correct position. Arms are up and with an exhalation lowering the body and in this process of lowering the body you have the sensation that in this case the right hip is moving forward and the left hip is pushing backwards. In other words, you have a sensation that there's a force from the left heel running all the way up, pushing the hip back, and from the right heel a force running upwards, on the inside of the leg, pushing the hip forward. Arms are up, and make a nice motion downwards, placing the hands, wherever feels comfortable and making a nice a forward bend exploring Pasvatasana try to keep the legs extended if the knees are bent especially the four forward leg, then grasp, for example, just above the ankle joint. Inhale slowly, move up, and coming back to a forward stand, lowering the arms, folding the hands. At this point, you might want to sit down or, if you like, you may stay in a standing pose because now we're going to explore Garuda Asana and we're going to do it in nice little steps and we'll start off with the arms, then we're going to explore the position of the legs and then we're going to combine them. First. You extend the left arm forward uh, to the right and bend it about 90 degrees. The right arm goes beneath it, bending it and placing it between the head and the left arm with the right palm facing, touching the left wrist or the, rest, the palm of the left hand. The thumb is extended and is placed between the eyebrows, like this. Try to prevent that the head sinks in towards the hand and the back is bent. The arms and the hands are coming, are positioning themselves before the head not the other way around. So stay in this position, feeling the back of the shoulders relaxing, extending, and then slowly release the hands again back towards the heart area, then the other way, extending the right arm forward to the left, bending it about 90 degrees, the left arm goes beneath, also bending between the head and the right arm, twisting the left wrist, positioning it on the right wrist or the palm of the right hand. Again, thumbs are extended, placing it between the eyebrows. Stay here for a couple of breaths. and choose a focus point. This will help you later on when you're exploring Garudasana.
in full. And on an out breath, release the arms again in front of the heart area. Now, the positioning of the legs. First, do as if you're doing tree pose. Again, making sure that the toes are spread out and there's softness in both feet. Then shifting your body weight to the right, then bending the right leg a bit, and then the left leg goes over it, and depending on your openness, on your flexibility, either placing the toes together, like this, or if the hips are more open and you have increased flexibility, perhaps the left foot is grasping the right ankle, like this. And here also, try to prevent that the hips are swaying to the right or the left. Try to keep them in front of you. And positioning the spinal cord and the head right above the ankle and the hips. A couple of breaths. Gazing at the point a couple of meters in front of you. And then release the legs, making a nice soft landing with the left foot, back to Tadasana. Fluently a move to the left side, bending the left leg, and now the right leg is coming over it. Either the toes are touching, or the right foot is grasping the left lower leg, like this. So, make a choice. If even this is a bit difficult for you, try to explore this pose, where the heel is touching just above the ankle. And slowly, again, back to mountain pose, Tadasana. Now we're going to combine these two positions, the positioning of the hands and the positioning of the feet, to full Garudasana. First, the legs are taking position, followed by the arms. Shifting the weight to the right, bending the right leg, the left leg goes over it, positioning the legs if you like. Then, as the left leg is the upper leg, the left arm extends first, bending it, placing the arms in position. And stay in this pose for a couple of breaths. Feeling the feet feeling the hands and the axis of the body running from the heels all the way through the spinal cord to the top of the head. Then release the arms and release the legs. Perhaps you want to loosen the legs a bit and then exploring the other side as well. Shifting the weight to the left, bending the left leg. Left is making a firm connection, right leg over it, extending the right arm first, bending it, and moving the left arm in position. Just a couple of breaths. And as I said, explore this pose for as long as you like. Then releasing the arms 
and releasing the legs. Coming back to mountain pose. Close the eyes and relax yourself for a moment. Open the eyes again. And then as a, a final pose, explore Uttanasana a bit. The first, tilting the hips a bit forward, so the pubic bone pushes forward, so the lower leg becomes extended. Arms stretching sideways and up. And exhale, folding yourself forward, placing the hands in front of you or next to the feet. And then grasping with the hands towards the elbows. Just a couple of breaths. Releasing the elbows, coming back up with a nice and deep inhalation, facing forward and lowering the arms. Coming to a nice sitting pose. And either closing your practice with a short meditation or exploring other parts of your daily practice, as you like. Take a nice deep in-breath from the bottom all the way to the top. And from the top of the body all the way down where the body is touching the earth. Again, slowly inhale filling the abdomen, the sides of the body and the chest. And exhale, opening the eyes. Thank you for joining me and see you next time.